I gotta tell you something I could do Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, I firstly want to thank absolutely everybody that has watched my very first video and I honestly was not expecting such a positive response and I'm definitely looking forward to doing a lot more hauls on my channel so definitely watch out for that. Um, but today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, I'm going to be talking about something that actually takes up about I'd say 90% of my life and that is being in medical school. So for those that do not know, I am a final year medical student at the University of Stellenbosch and to say that it has been a very, very long journey is an understatement. Um, so yeah, today I actually wanted to talk about how to get into medical school and for the people and possible high school students that are actually looking to find some sort of resource or information regarding this, this video is definitely for you. So the first thing that I actually wanted to talk about is, you know, finding your motivation and finding your why as to why you want to come to medical school and what your intention for coming into medical school is because it is such a long degree. It actually takes six years. Um, I think that at the University of Free State, it's five years, but six or five years is a very long time to be studying anything. And I think that because it is so intense and so stressful, you really do need to find your motivation and your why that is going to help you and carry you through the next six years. So definitely figure out why you want to do this. Do you want to help people? Do you want to make money? Do you like the idea of it? Because I think that's what I actually liked about it. I watched shows like Dr. 90210, I watched Botched, and I thought, oh my word, I'm going to do, I'm going to become a plastic and reconstructive surgeon and I'm going to do something that's super exciting and honestly it is a very harsh reality um firstly because we are in south africa and a lot of the hospitals that we work in are actually very resource poor there's not enough staff there's not enough um resources in general so it is very stressful and very different from like gray's anatomy so definitely find your why and the second thing that you definitely need to do is also try find either a doctor or a medical student that you can either shadow or talk to because they can actually guide you and give you the information that you need to understand the type of journey that you require as well as just the clinical skills that you'll have to learn and do that will help you on your journey. So that's something I did not do. I did not know any doctor. I did not know any medical student. I just rocked up and here I am today. But yeah, I would just advise you to try and find somebody that you can talk to. Um, something else that's also very, very important is starting early. So right now, this is for the grade nine students in particular. Um, this is the best time to start because in grade nine, that is the year that you actually choose your subject, right? You choose your subjects for grade 10, grade 11 and grade 12. And this is very important because you need to choose um, mathematics, which is a very important subject. Um, you need to choose physical sciences and you can also choose life sciences. It's not a prerequisite, but it really does help you because it helps you understand um, human anatomy in a way, as well as the biological aspect of things. Because in university, well, in Stellenbosch University in first year, we do a module called Life Forms, which is very similar to life sciences. And I think that having that foundation phase in high school really helped me um, do a little bit better in life forms. And this is why I think that in grade nine, it's essential that you make sure that you choose those particular subjects and it really does help you solidify your application when you do get to the trick. From grade 10 until 11, you really need to be 
focusing on the actual hard work that will solidify your application for medical school. That is the report that the universities will be using um, on your conditional acceptance into medical school because applications um, in South Africa for medical school opens really early. I think that studies opens around March and they close quite early as well. They close around June. So you really need to focus on your grade 11 marks because those need to be your highest because that is what's going to allow you to get conditional acceptance into a class of about 200 students because on average every university would be choosing around 200 to 250 students um, for the medical student group and so that is very important for you to actually focus on that. The second thing is solidifying your extracurricular activities that you actually do in high school. So for example, I did things like public speaking and I also did a little bit of athletics, but that was not, yeah, I just did it just so that I could be healthy, but I was not the best. But, you know, doing things like that and also joining any sort of community service or leadership positions um, like the RCL will really help you because a lot of the times they are looking for multifaceted people. They are looking for people that will be good in both academics as well as just, you know, very good communication and very good social skills. So in high school, joining as many clubs and as many extracurricular activities that you can obviously manage in addition to your academics will be the best combination of things to help you with your application. Um, and definitely, as I said, focus on your grade 11 results. In grade 12, what you need to really focus on is making sure that you obviously maintain because if you have gotten an amazing average in grade 11, so for example, I got 89% in grade 11, but that's only because I knew that this was the report that they would be using. So I worked extra, extra, extra hard to make sure that I could just get in anyway. So I wasn't even aiming for medicine at that point. I was aiming for either chemical engineering or mechanical engineering and for the life of me, I was also aiming for actuarial science. I knew that I was not gonna do that, but I was just aiming for absolutely anything, just in case. Um, but definitely, as I said, you should try to aim for an average of about 80 to 85%. It could be really high and it's really difficult to get um, an average like that for some people, but um, aiming for anything lower, like 75%, honestly, um, might be very difficult for you to actually get in eventually because there are people around the country that you are competing against and these are people that are probably getting averages of about 85% and above and this is not to scare you or to make you feel like you can't do it but it's to basically just motivate you to understand that you need to do your absolute best and just do your best and not compare yourself but absolutely just try your best um yeah, so that is that on just focusing on your extracurricular activities and making sure that your grade 11 report is amazing. Um, in grade 12, obviously it's a very long year, it's a very busy year, it also is very stressful. And as I said, you need to focus on just maintaining your average. So for example, if you got 80% last year or in grade 11, then you should try to get 80% and maybe even better because what happens is once they have condition conditionally accepted you based on your grade 11 marks, then you just make sure that you do not drop your average. You do not drop below a specific average because then it's almost like, why are you dropping? You know, they can't trust you. I don't know, but just make sure that you do not um, drop. And also in matric, you obviously have to write something called the National Benchmark Test, which is a test that is written nationally. They've got multiple sites and different places that you can actually write. Um, it depends on your location and it depends on where you actually apply. So I wrote my NBT test at the University of Pretoria. It's based on the mathematics component, component as well as the academic literacy and the quantitative literacy. So the mathematics is basically just everything that you've ever done in maths, that's what they'll be testing you on. It's very difficult to like try to spot and figure out what you need to study. Just try to do as many past papers as you possibly can and also try to um, just get some sort of extra lessons or just work really hard in maths in general because I know I didn't do 
quite well in the maths component. Um, I don't know. I think it was because we were so, I was so used to using a calculator that by the time I got to the test, it really was just another world trying to calculate without a calculator. But that's just me and not being prepared. But definitely just try to practice not using a calculator because you won't be able to use one in the test. And there's also the, acad the academic literacy and the quantitative literacy. And that's just based on comprehension and general reading skills. So it is obviously very difficult to prepare for that as well. It's based on your reading skills, your comprehension. And so there are a lot of other sites that you can also use online. I think that um, weren't available when I was in a trick, but I know that there are um, different schools to help you prepare for the NBTs. There's different papers that are out these days that can actually help you um, prepare for the NBTs but also once again with these um, MBT tests you have to do them as early as possible because at Stellenbosch University you have to have done or written the NBT test by either June or July um, so that they can actually offer you a conditional acceptance because it does contribute to your acceptance so it is a very important um, aspect and component that you need to focus on and try to do well in. It is not something that will determine whether you will absolutely not get in because I I did really well in my academic and my quantitative literacy and then my mathematics was not the best but I still managed to get in at you know the universities that I applied in so it's very important for you to try your best as well. Something else that we also need to definitely elaborate on is the fact that you need to try and apply at as many universities as you possibly can. I know that obviously with application fees, it can get really expensive and not everybody wants to move to another province to study and some people aren't you know, comfortable with stuff like that. But I applied at, I think, five different universities. Um, I applied at the University of Wits, um, UP, the University of Pretoria, the University of Free State, UCT, as well as Stelis, because I honestly, I really wanted to get in and I was afraid because I know that it's such tough um, competition trying to get into medical school and I just wanted to study it. So regardless of where I was going, I was ready to do anything. <laughs> but yeah, um, luckily enough, I did get in at four of the five universities. The only university I did not get in was the University of Pretoria. They put me in the BSc program, but obviously I did not go like, yeah. Um, but definitely try to apply as, to as many um, universities as you possibly can because you know, if this is your passion and if this is what you really, really want, you want to try and solidify your application and make sure that you actually are going to get in. And, you know, who knows, you know, moving to another province um, could be, you know, the best thing that ever happens to your life. And you just really do learn a lot of independence. So I would like you to be as open-minded as you possibly can when applying. Obviously, once you have now gotten through matric, finally, and you're waiting for your final results, um, I just want to put out a word of positivity and a word of encouragement that if your marks do not look like how you want them to and you really didn't do as well as you had hoped, I just want you to know that it is definitely not the end of the world. There are so many other ways to get into medical school or even just university in general. Um, I know that, you know, there's a postgraduate way of getting into medical school via VITS called the GMP um, program. I'm not too clued up on how that works, but I definitely know that they have all that information on their website and I will also link down um, in the description box just the VITS website to give you some sort of clarification and understanding of how that works. But you can also obviously always improve your marks if you didn't do as well as you had expected or, you know, wanted. And, you know, taking a gap year to improve your marks is nothing that you have to be ashamed of. Um, everybody's journey is absolutely different. And I know a lot of people, um, you know, have not necessarily gotten into medical school the very first time because it is really difficult and it is um, a very high competitive, you know, degree. So I think that obviously if this is really what you want and this is your dream and your goal, you should try by all means to try and um, improve your marks and try again. Um, so definitely I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that you found it informative. 
I'll put all the different websites that I've spoken about in the description box. I'll put down the NBT website, the Vets University website, as well as the Stellenbosch University website, which is the university that I'm studying at. So yeah, I hope that you guys found this video informative and I'll catch you guys in the next one. It's a